The first week of July happens to fall on this Thursday. So welcome. We're very glad that y'all are here. It's hard to believe it's July, um, but it is. So happy July 4th weekend. I hope you all have big plans to celebrate the independence of, of this great nation and to enjoy the freedom that we have to celebrate to celebrate it. So we have a, a big 4th of July parade that we are in and doing um, with our community and our church family. My parents are in town. We're celebrating, Colt's birthday was uh, last week, but we are celebrating it with my parents and family um, who are in town this week. So we are excited for July 4th and for freedom and for Colt's birthday and his life and for this great country. So I hope that y'all have big plans with family and friends um, to celebrate this weekend as well. And let's go ahead and kick it off with a time that we can spend together as daughters of the king studying his word and studying the things that god says about us that are true and promises that we can stand in and um, be thankful for as we go into this weekend our next chosen will be the first week of august which is crazy to think about but that will be thursday august 5th will be our next chosen so um i um, hope to see you all back then and I'll go ahead and open us up in a word of prayer, and then we will go ahead and get started. God, we come to you and we just thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you for the way that you love us. We thank you, God, for who you say we are. We thank you, God, for the freedom that exists in this country. And we thank you for the men and women that are serving and that have given all and sacrifice to protect that freedom, God. And we thank you, God, for the the picture that it paints of the greatest sacrifice of all on the cross and that you you gave us that grace gift that we might, if we believed on you, believe on you, we can have eternal life. And we know where we're going to spend eternity for heaven. What a gift that is, God, and what, what freedom there is in knowing that there is grace and that there's a gift and that there was a price paid in bloodshed so that we might be able to know where we'll spend eternity after our time here on this earth is done. I just thank you, God, for this country. I thank you for our leaders. I pray, God, that you guide and direct them to make choices that reflect who you are and that reflect you, God. And for those that don't, God, I just pray um, that you would, 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 would bring leaders in this country that want to glory, glorify and honor you and all that they do. Help us to be examples of that and all that we do. We thank you for this time. We pray that you bless it. We pray, God, that you use these, um, these, this theme that we're going to talk about tonight 
We just pray God that you use it in each of our lives and make it real to each of us in each of our lives and exactly what we're going through and what we're facing. Because we thank you, God, that you're a personal God. We thank you that you love us and that you know us by name. We ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All right. Uh, our theme verse for chosen, if you are just joining us, is Jeremiah 1 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And aren't you thankful that he calls us by name? I'm thankful for a heavenly father that knows us inside out and that calls us by name. That's a great comfort to me. And it's something that I remind myself of every day. And if you don't, you should. Uh, last month, we looked at the theme of who versus whose, and we kind of took a dive back into identity um, that we really looked at week one of Chosen. And, and we, we are, I think the biggest takeaway for me from last week last month was that our confidence comes from a knowledge, a belief, and an application in whose we are rather than who the world tells us we are or should be or those standards that the world sets for us. When we know whose we are, who we are in our Heavenly Father and who God says we are really can become real in our life and it can define a piece of our identity. We had three quick takeaways from a devotional that we read last week. At, in looking at the fact that we are royalty, that we are daughters of the king, and that we, we remember that who we are is defined by whose we are, that who that we so seek to find and to grasp and to understand who we are, that's just a key thing that you hear in today's society. But when we are confident in whose we are, who we are is defined, it's refined, and it's magnified. And so if you missed last week, it's all recorded. You can go back and watch it here on Facebook or you can watch it uh, back on YouTube. You can share it. Um, you can save it and watch it later, but go back and watch that if you missed it. We're going to jump right into our theme for tonight, starting with our devotional. And our theme for tonight is known by name. And this is something that I have held on to uh, more tightly than I ever have. Uh, in the past five years. And it's something that's very real to me. And it's something that I also have to remind myself of daily. And so maybe that's where you're at. Maybe you don't even know what it means to be known by name. Maybe you say, I've never really um, heard, maybe not even in an audible way, but I really don't know what it means to hear God call my name. And so we're going to look at tonight really what that means and give you some quick takeaways from what it means to be called by name by Almighty God, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Our Devo for tonight is called, He Knows Your Name. And after the devotional, there's a song that I heard for the first time last week, and it touched me so deeply. We're going to kind of piece apart that song verse by verse and look at the chorus and kind of put it in with our takeaways of this whole theme he knows by name and bring it together and kind of wrap it up uh, for tonight. So I hope that it's a blessing to you. The devotional is called He Knows Your Name. Is there something in nature that takes your breath away? A sunset with pink skies, snow-covered mountaintops, or maybe foam-covered seas. It's oftentimes mind-blowing to look at God's creation and try to understand the same God, <clears throat> um, the same God who created the vastness of the ocean, he also created you. The same God who created the highest mountain will sit with you in your lowest valley. He pursues you, he chases after you, and he pours his love daily over you. The same God who created this earth, this universe, who is bigger than your mind could ever fathom. He looks at you and your strongest moments and your weakest moments, and he says gently to you, you're known. Your name is written on the palm of his hand. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows your dreams. He knows your good days and your bad days. And most of all, he knows your heart. You are known. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not. Therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Luke 12, 7. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Romans 8, 27. That's why we can be so sure that every detail of our lives of love for God is worked into something good. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought from afar off. Psalm 139 verse 2. 
I love that devotional. It's short and it's sweet. And it's a reminder over and over that you're known. If you didn't catch it, it says you're known. And it said it two or three times. It repeated you're known. It's something that God wants to sink into our heart and seep into the very depths of our soul to where the emotions that sometimes sometimes drive us really are wrapped up in the thought of your known. When those emotions seek to take over, when the anxiety threatens to come in and overwhelm us, you're known. God wants you to take those two words and to ingrain them into your soul so that when the trials come and the struggles come and the worry comes and the anxiety comes and that feeling of being overwhelmed comes, he wants with two words to bring you back to the place that is your center, your known by the creator of the universe. Aren't you thankful that Jesus knows every intricate aspect and detail of your heart? He knows every piece. Aren't you grateful that he chases after us when maybe we've done things that feel like we're worthless, that we're not worth pursuit, yet he chases after us? Do you really grasp the fact that he knows your dreams? He knows your thoughts. He knows you're going in and you're coming out. He understands your horrible, horrible, bad days in the deepest valley. And he sees your highs on that mountaintop. He knows your heart. He's numbered the hairs on your head. What a thought. Do you really believe that he calls you by name? And that's where we're going to part tonight. We're really going to look at, I want to ask you two questions. Would you recognize your name if it was called by your heavenly father? Do you think in the trials, as much as you do in the joy and the blessings that come, do you think of the fact that he's whispering in those moments of in-between, that he's chanting your name in the struggle, and that he's calling you in those moments, moments of way, waywardness by your name, because he is. Today, we're going to look at three truths that were given by being known by name by our king. The assurance, there's three things that I want to look at. There's, there's the assurance, the promise, and these truths that we are given by claiming the fact that he knows and he calls us by name. And the first thing that we get by being known by name is connection. John 20, verse 16. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn there to John 20, verse 16. We're going to kind of look at that verse um, and kind of pick it apart for our first point of connection. Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Our heavenly father knows us and he wants that personal connection with each of us. When he calls us by name, he, it's a declaration of who we are and how much he loves us. And, you know, it's really a connection. I, I like to think of it as that connection between his heart and ours. I love remembering how I came up with and how Jake and I, when we uh, knew about Colts, that we were pregnant with Colts and then Maley, how we arrived at their names. It wasn't just something that we picked out of a book. It was a name that we deeply looked into the meaning of each thing. And we named them because it was a connection between our heart, our heavenly father's heart and our precious, this precious child's heart. And so, you know, their names were so much more of a word to us. They were a declaration of who they were to our heavenly father and who they were to us. And, you know, it, 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 it remains a connection between their heart and mine as a mother. And I love calling them by name. I love calling them daughter and son. I love saying Colt and Maley. I love their names and I love to call them by names. And you know what? I can remember as a little girl and still today, when I hear my daddy call my name, it means something to me because he gave it to me. Our heavenly father calls us by name. He calls us daughter. He gave us that name and it means something to him. There's a song and the name of this song is called My Shepherd, Our Shepherd Knows Our Name. And I heard it for the first time. We had Pensacola College um, come to church and there was a group of guys that sang and I'd never heard this song before. And um, I didn't even, I wanted to video it, but I was too busy just bawling in tears because it was literally felt like it was my heavenly father speaking these words into my soul, reminding me that he knows Kylie. He knows my name. And so I'm going to share it with you at the end. Somebody else that's singing it because um, I didn't get a recording of it, but um, somebody, it's a beautiful rendition of it that I'm going to share at the end, but we're going to break apart the verses of this song. Our shepherd knows the shepherd knows our name. And the first verse, here are the words to the first verse of that song. The sound of love invites us to come running. 
the shepherd's voice is in our hearts. We walk his way, the pastures of his presence, and find him in the peace that grace imparts. You know, the words to that song speak to the very depths of my soul. To think that the sound of love, that calling of our name, invites us to come running into the arms of our Savior. Have you ever been at a place in life where you just need a hug. You just need somewhere to run to take refuge. The name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous can run into and be blessed, that they can have shelter and protection. Our heavenly father, that same refuge and strong tower that we can run into and call by name, he also knows and calls us by our name. I want to look at a moment um, in history where there was a woman who was called by name and to be a woman and to when I read this and we go through this, I want you to imagine that you are this woman and imagine what it would be. Imagine what it will be when we audibly are home and can hear Jesus calling our name. Go back to John 20. That was the verse we looked at for connection. And we're going to go back there. And, you know, <clears throat> we're going to look at Mary. And when she heard Jesus call her name, and I'm sure that she'd heard her name, Mary, leave the lips of many people throughout her life. But I think that I, I know that this had to have been the sweetest time she heard her name called when it was called by her Savior. Um, I bet that it sounded different on this morning than it had any other time in her life. This morning, some women approached an empty tomb. The rolled back stone surprised them. They mourned and that they were afraid that someone had taken their Lord to a place they didn't know. John 20 verse 11 says, but Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and she looked upon the sepulcher. As the story unfolds at the tomb, that tomb that Mary once thought was empty suddenly became consumed with the brilliance of two angels. She explained to them her sorrow, and then she turned to meet Jesus face to face, yet she did not know it yet. John 20, verse 15 says, Jesus saith unto her, woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, sir, if thou I have borne him hence. Tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. I imagine that she must have felt hysterical. She must have felt panicked. Can you imagine the anxiety that had probably swept over her as she wondered where they had taken her Savior? And with, um, I imagine she was defeated. She was probably crying. She was emotionally distressed. And these words were pouring from her broken heart. Um, and it, she was pleading and begging with anyone to help her find her savior. <clears throat> In a moment so raw, Jesus could have done anything. He could have said anything. He could have opened up heavens and called down a chorus of angels. He, there's a fly flying around, you'll see it. <laughs> um, he, he could have announced in triumphant victory that he had risen. He could have shouted and claimed that defeat over death that happened at the cross as he rose again. He could have made the very earth beneath her feet shake, but the very first revelation of himself following the greatest victory in the history of the world, Jesus chose to speak to one woman personally, and here's what he said. Verse 16 of John chapter 20, Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabbani, which is to say, Master, my prayer for you today is that you don't miss that moment where Jesus is calling you personally by name. It didn't end with Mary. He calls each of us by name. He called Jesus of us to ourself. We saw in that devotional, he chases after us. He is in pursuit of us, no matter what we've done, no matter how deep we are in the throes of anxiety, no matter how hard the trial, no matter how high we are on that mountaintop, he still calls us and seeks for us and cries out for us to turn and to recognize the fact that he is calling us and that he knows us personally by name. You know, you, I want us to take away from tonight that our heavenly father wants a personal connection with us. And he gave that to us through Jesus Christ. We can recognize in the midst of a noisy world in the middle of our hardest day and the middle of our highest mountaintop, we can recognize his voice and we can have that personal connection just like Mary did with her savior when he called her name daughter he called her name mary what a thought it, what a thought this is that god can love the whole world by loving one person one at a time god
I can love the whole world by loving you right now where you're at. Only God can do that. The second thing that we get, um, the second thing that we see from <clears throat> knowing that we are called by name is that we get intercession. We get intercession from Jesus, intercession on our behalf from Jesus. You know, uh, we're reminded that he's praying and we're going to look at some scripture references, but we're reminded that he, that Jesus is praying for us. He's praying on our behalf to our heavenly father, to his father, to our father. Um, just as I, I think about just the, how I intercede for my children, I cry out to my heavenly father on behalf of my children for their lives, for their spouses, for their future mates, for the past that they'll choose, the choices that they take, for the lives that I so desperately want them to give to Jesus and to serve and to dedicate to him and to follow him so that those things that they do in fellowship with their heavenly father can ring on into eternity and can be carried out and they can enjoy those in those things in eternity that they value. My heart's pride for them is that they value the things that are eternal over the things that are temporal in this world. But I can't make those choices for them, but I can intercede on their behalf to our father. We have our savior who intercedes for us on behalf, intercedes on our behalf to his father, to our father. What a concept that is. He can't, he, he, he won't make the choices for us, just like I can't for my children, but he intercedes and he prays for us. What a powerful thought that that is. Romans 8 34 says, who is that that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who even at the right hand of God, right now where he sits at the right hand of our heavenly father, he also maketh intercession for us. He prays for you, knowing that you are known by name that you are a daughter of the king, you can also know that you have intercession, that he prays for you. Hebrews 7, 26. Actually, back up to um, verse 24. And let's start there and read through. Uh, but this man... But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermo utter uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such a high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. That Jesus prays for you. First Timothy 2, 5 says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, and that man is Jesus Christ. There is one who intercedes for you on behalf of you to our heavenly father, and that is Jesus. The chorus to this song, the shepherd knows our name, says this. He knows your name and speaks it to his father. His thoughts are with you each moment of the day. He is not stranger, a stranger to your hurt, your heartache, you're in his care. The shepherd knows your name. What a comforting thought to know that he knows your name and not only does he know your name, but he speaks it in intercession and in prayer to your heavenly father. The third thing that we take away from knowing that we are known by name is security. No matter where we go, what we do, how badly we've messed up, how deeply we hurt, how overwhelming the pressures of this life may be on our every day, we can come back to the fact you are known. You are known by the creator of the universe. Verse two of, the, of this song says, he never sleeps. Our shepherd never slumbers. He knows no night. His watch care never ends. He sees beyond the dangers of this moment. We need not fear what life, what lies beyond the bend. Don't be afraid. The dawn of hope is breaking. God planned your tomorrows. He'll see you through today. There's security in the fact that we are known by name. He's planned our tomorrows. He'll see us through today. He never sleeps. His watch care never ends. He knows you and he sees, I love this. He sees beyond the dangers, the heartache, the struggle, the anxiety, the worry, the hopelessness of this moment today. And he sees what lies beyond. He's already there. He's already ahead of you. He's already there calling you by name. You just have to know that you are called by name and don't miss it. Psalm 139 verse 17 through 18 says, how precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. 
I love that scripture because it reminds us that his thoughts are always with us. He knows where we're at. He knows what we're thinking. There's security in knowing that you are known by name. Isaiah 43, one says, but now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, then, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by name. Thou art mine. I tell my children, I gave you your name. Your mind. It doesn't matter where you go, how big you get, how grown you get, how successful you are, or how unsuccessful you are. It doesn't matter. You cannot do anything that would make you lose my love. Our Heavenly Father wants you to know that He created you, He has redeemed you. And when you believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have become a daughter of the King. You are His. He calls you by name and He says in His word, You are mine. You are mine. You are his. You don't have to wonder or question if he's going to know your name years from now, tomorrow. You will always remain a daughter of the king um, once he has called you by name. He knows how far you've come. He sees right where you are. He is already up ahead waiting for you in that tomorrow that, that maybe seems unknown to us, but it's so very known to our creator. I'm going to put my name in here, but I want you to go through. I want you to put your name. If one or all of them jumps out at you, you jot them down, you write them down in your Bible and your journal. I don't care if you have to take 50 sticky notes and stick them all over your mirror in the morning. So you see them when you're getting ready for work or when you're getting ready for your day. But whatever you do, you claim these promises, you claim these truths, and you remind yourself every single day that you are known by the creator. I'll tell you what, there have been some moments in my life I did not think that I could go on. There have been some moments I didn't know how I would face figuring out tomorrow. There are moments I didn't know how I would put one foot in front of the other and nor did I want to. But I had to remind myself that I was known. I had to remind myself that I was loved. I had to remind myself of who I was in Christ and that I was called by name or I wouldn't have made it. And so I tell you that because that comes from a deepest, a deep spot in my soul that is centered on the fact of whose I am. And it's centered on the fact of who, of, of the truths that he says to me in his word. And so I hope that you take some of these for your own. And if you've seen my, I was talking to um, Hannah last night and I, I am, it doesn't mean you have to, but in, in mine, I write all over my Bible, these little promises that God gives me because that's where I'm at a lot of the time. And so I'm constantly reminded that I'm loved, that I'm create that I was created, that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, that I'm known, that I'm forgiven, that I'm accepted, these things that God tells me who I am, because if I didn't write them down, if I didn't keep them in front of me, the worry and the anxiety that the enemy seeks to bring in, it will come. Those attacks do come. That is the enemy's goal and purpose is to keep on bringing those attacks so much that our mind gets clouded and we no longer even know where we're coming from. We think that nobody gets, knows, or understands us when really it's an attack coming from the enemy that seeks to destroy us. So if you keep God's promises and what he says in front of you, you have ammunition to fire back and attack the enemy when those attacks come and you identify what it is, an attack from the enemy. Kylie, you put your name in here, but I'm going to put mine because I'm claiming it tonight. Kylie, I speak your name to our father. Kylie, I pray for you. Kylie, I'm thinking of you every moment of the day. Kylie, I love you. Kylie don't be afraid. Kylie, I'm already in your tomorrow. Kylie, I see your today. Kylie, I'll see you through. Kylie, there's hope. Kylie, I see your heartache. I see your hurt. Kylie, you're in my care. Kylie, I never sleep. Kylie, I see beyond this moment for you. Kylie, I know what lies ahead. Kylie, my watch care never ends. Kylie, rest. I'm watching over you. Kylie, I love you. Kylie, do you hear my voice? Kylie, walk with me. Kylie, I have enough grace for you. Kylie, I love you. Kylie, daughter, I know you. You put your name in there. Those are things that I have written all over the place that I remind myself of, that I remind that, that my creator calls me by name. He knows me. 
He calls me by name and he wants me to know that I'm known and that I'm loved and that my name means something to him and that it's spoken to his father on my behalf. If that doesn't touch your soul deep down, I don't know what will. Our savior speaks our name to our father. I hope tonight's chosen encouraged you. I hope that if you take away nothing else, you take away these two words, you are known, you're known. I hope that it challenges you to be a woman who listens for God's call, who waits for God's call, who anticipates God's call, who knows his voice, who knows that he pursues you in everything, the good times and the bad. And I hope that it encourages each one of us to pursue a life that honors our heavenly father. And it, it produces that strong confidence that comes in a woman who knows God's voice, who's called by King of, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords daughter, and who knows that we are known by name. Three promises and truths that we can claim in knowing that we are called by name. We can claim connection. We can know connection, that personal connection. Intercession, we are prayed for. Our name is spoken by Jesus. To our heavenly father there's that the greatest intercession there could ever be and that's that mediator that's between god the father jesus christ on our behalf security we can have security in knowing that every hair on our head is numbered that we are known inside and out that he knows our thoughts and that his thoughts towards us are numberless and that they're with us every moment of the day what security is there in knowing that you are known every single piece of you good bad ugly awful hard horrible beautiful is known by our creator, by our heavenly father, by our savior. What an encouragement that is to me. I'm going to close in prayer and then I'm going to play this song. The shepherd knows your name and put up the takeaways. And I hope this song is as much of a blessing as it is to you as it was to me last week when I heard it for the first time. I love you all. I hope you have a wonderful week, a wonderful weekend celebrating freedom and our great nation. And remember, Remember to tell somebody about Jesus this weekend as you are celebrating and eating your hot dogs and hamburgers and shooting off fireworks and doing whatever you're going to do, the parade, find someone and tell them about the greatest sacrifice of all. Tell them what real, true, lasting freedom, what it is, where it comes from, and who gives it. And tell them how they can know that they will spend can spend eternity in heaven forever too. So I love you all. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Let's go to the board in prayer. God, I just thank you for this time that we had together. We thank you, God, for freedom. We thank you, God, that you call us by name. We thank you that you, we thank you for that example of Mary when she was distressed and she didn't know where her savior was. We thank you that you could have said or done anything you wanted to do, but you chose to call her by name, Mary. God, help us not miss your voice when you are calling us by name. When we struggle, that you're there. When we are in the on the mountaintop, that you're telling us to give that glory to you. That when we stray from where we should be, you're pursuing and you're chasing after us, calling us by name. God, help us to remember the power that is in our name, the power that is in the fact that you speak our name to our Father. We just thank you Jesus, for loving us. We thank you for being that great mediator between our Father. We just thank you for the greatest grace gift that ever could be, your gift of, 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 of the cross, that we know that we can spend eternity forever with you, hearing you call us by name. Just thank you for tonight. I pray that you bless each lady watching and that you encourage them, that they are known and called by name, by their Savior, by the creator of the universe, and that they are seen. We ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All right, let's play this song. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and we will see you August 5th, the first Thursday in July.